Hi, Jenny. Wow. You were kidding. Yeah, we are, we are, we are live right now. <laughs> so um, what are the challenges in, in bringing a character to, to life with just your voice? Um, I guess just the, the letting go of, of um, I guess the, you know, the responsibility of all of him, uh, I guess. You know, you, you really, it's, it's freeing at the end of the day. Uh, you just sort of let go and you really just trust uh, your director, Jorge. I mean, I mean, he's the, the, the whole reason why I signed on to this. I mean, you, I, I don't, didn't even read a script first. It's generally how it works. You read a script and then you go, okay, I, I, I like this. I think I want to meet the director and hear his vision for it. And um, instead, he just said he wanted to come and, and uh, pitch me a story. And, and instead, he told me two stories. He told me one very personal a uh, story that I, I won't share here, but uh, but it moved me almost to tears, and and I knew that if this movie had any amount of that in it, it was just going to be truly alive and emotional and real and, and beautiful. And, and then he told me the story of Book of Life, and I just thought, I was like, man, this is like punk rock and cool, and, and uh, I would love to go down this rabbit hole of... You know, there's no wrong answers when you're doing a uh, an animated movie. Like, you know, you you can be like, blah, 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 and they'll get, they'll use that. <laughs> they'll they, they'll just create something in the world that it fits, and uh, you don't know it might be in the movie, so you just kind of let go. Uh, how is it immersing yourself in Mexican culture for the film? Because that's something we don't usually see in Hollywood: uh, recognition of other cultures. Yeah, I. I Really relied very heavily on my own Mexican culture and heritage. Um, I'm kidding. That was a good story. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I, I mean, I, I think I had always heard of the Day of the Dead, but I, you know, I don't. As a just an American kid from the South, I, I didn't. I obviously didn't really know anything about the Mexican culture, and uh, and I mean, this was this was an education, you know. I and I. And, and I'm not saying this for this. I, it is something that I am going to adopt into my own. I'm not a religious person, uh, I, but I am a very spiritual person. And I think the idea of life and then whatever comes after, the idea of when someone moves on to whatever's after, if, if the people that are still in this world treat them as if they're there, cook them their their, their favorite meals, uh, serve their, you know, their drinks that they, that, that they used to like, they liked apple juice, or tell their stories, or their jokes, or, or whatever, I mean, it's like as if they're there, they're really there, they do exist, and, and I just think that's one of the most beautiful traditions that I've heard of. We'll come right over here. Hi. Hi. Um, Manolo and Joaquin go through so many lengths to show Maria how much they care about her. Have you ever done anything similar? Like, not similar. Um, but what what have you done, I guess, to show him? Nothing really. I, um, <laughs> Don't anything. say people. No, no. answer people. Uh, yeah, but look, I mean, I, I'm married, so I, I, I try to do all, as much as as much as I can of that stuff. Uh, I mean, look, I've, I've danced with my wife for an entire three months before we actually, like, you know, started to date, I guess. And, you know, we've been together nine and a half years, so I'm sure I've done a lot of that stuff. Uh, I haven't fought monsters, uh, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, singing and dancing and stuff like that. Hi, Jaden. Shannon. Zeta. Hi. I don't think I need a, a mic, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I thought it was so beautiful how the, the movie captivated death and the way that children could understand it. Being a father yourself, how important was that storyline for you? Yeah, I mean, I... I I thought it was one of the most, uh, you know, I was like, cause when I heard about it, it was, it was about the, the Mexican Day of the Dead, I was, like, I was like, wow, how are they going to pull that off as a kid's movie? And, and I think it's such a beautiful way of looking at it. Like, it, it doesn't deal with it as death, as in, like, they're gone. And, and it's, it's why it's literally the land of the remembered, you know, that they don't go, they don't go away. You know, they can really still be with you. And, and, I, and I think, you know, I, I think some people will, maybe be afraid to breach this with their, with their children, but I don't know, I think it's a really, it's, it's a really safe and beautiful way to talk about it if you, if you feel like you want to you wanna do that, you know, because it's, it's going to happen eventually, you know, they're going to have to, you know, I guess learn about it, and right. you know, better maybe to learn about it in a, in a beautiful f fiction world uh, in a, than, than in real life, uh, you know, first. Don't come right over to the side. 
before you started doing the, the voicing of the, of the character, did you were able to see the animation and the look and feel of, of what your car was going to be out of in the movie? Yeah, that was a, I mean, uh, there was nothing animated yet, but there was a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, character art and world art. Uh, Jorge's wife actually does a lot of the art in the movie. and, and um, it uh, it was just so alive. It looked like a magical pinata burst open, and, and like <laughs> Mexican culture fell out, you know, and <laughs> uh, or some Latin culture uh, um, fell out. But um, you know, uh, the first character picture that I saw was um, he had a way bigger mustache, which I'm very upset that he doesn't have as big a mustache as, uh, as he did. But in 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 Joaquin's mind, his mustache is way bigger than uh, than what's actually in the movie. It incorporated your, your movement, or um, I don't know if it incorporate. I mean, I'm sure that that the animators they film you while you while you're doing the you know the recording and you know the some of the stuff that I was doing the fighting wise maybe they put it in. Uh, I I don't remember all the stuff I was doing in those crazy recordings. You just sort of very very insanely vomit out a bunch of like stuff and um, like. Someone, the idea of someone that fights saying their own name is hilarious to me. And it's like, it's <laughs> the funniest thing in the world. So I, I, <laughs> that was not in the script that we just sort of found on the day. So I mean, it, it, they, they, that's what's so amazing about, the, I think, the animated world is that it's such a fluid uh, process, I guess, you know, that sometimes they don't even know where, where the idea is going to come from. It just sort of, just sort of materializes, you know. For, for live action movies, things, I would say probably are a little bit more planned out because you know the day starts and you're burning money, and uh, which is it's the same probably for an animated movie, but it's just a lot of different moving parts and how the things materialize. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question over here. Hi, Channing. I'm Joel Dean for Latin Trends. I wanted to ask: in the movie, we see Joaquin learn one of the biggest lessons, which is to be a hero, you have to be selfless. And I wanted to know: has there ever been a time in your career where you've been a little selfish? S selfless or selfish? Selfish? And selfish. perhaps learn to be selfless after Um, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I do remember, actually when I was going to do Jump Street, uh, I had just worked with uh, Chris Pratt, and I, th I looked at him on like the, I was about to go do Jump Street, and I looked at Chris Pratt, uh, and I go, man, I don't... <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm about to go do a movie that I think you would be way better for. <laughs> and he was just like, wait, really? Uh, you know, we had a conversation about it, but, you know, I guess that was my selfish, because <laughs> I went and did the movie. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, in the selfless side of it, you know, you, you do have to, when you're on a movie uh, and telling a story, I think one of the things I've only learned probably in the last three years, four, four years, um, is that the story's not about, it's not, like, you're not the story. The story is the story. The movie is the story. And I think uh, when I, a lot of young actors and, and a lot of actors in general just, they only worry about their character. They only look at, like, who their character is and what they can do to make it bigger or better or whatever that, whatever that is. Instead of trying to understand why and how your character fits and services and is a part of the larger story. Because it's not a story without, without a bunch of different parts of character and, and plot and so on, but you're just a little piece of, of a larger tapestry. And I, and I think that if people would be a little bit more giving, you know, that not to make it all about themselves, uh, that and it helps the process like a lot when you just go, all right, maybe this scene's not about me. <laughs> maybe this, this scene should be about someone else or something else. Thank you, that was great. Um, so I'm a parent, you're a parent, and this, this was one of the themes in the movie. Uh, parents sometimes push children to do things that they feel are in their child's, their child's best interest, but not actually. Mm -hmm. And I want to know if you ever have experienced that and if children are faced with that dilemma, what would you suggest? How would they handle that? Because, um, you know, uh, Joaquin's character wanted to live up to his father's expectations, and Manolo somewhat wanted to live up to his father's expectations, but remained true to himself. How do you feel children should navigate those type of dilemmas and still kind of maintain level of respect for their parents? 
Um, you know, I, communication is probably the, the the greatest tool that you can that you can use there, uh, and and that that's a hard thing to have, you know, between a you know a child and a, and a, a parent, you know, not just an adult but a parent, you know, someone that is completely responsible for you, and you know, I'm a parent now, and and uh, you know. She's still pretty young, and I still feel so responsible. And, and you know, and pretty much her only job is to get up every day, and and, uh, and, and I just want her to eat. <laughs> just like, Please eat. And uh, you know, but I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I haven't made it quite, so I don't. I'm not going to have a great, you know, perfect answer for it. Any of that stuff, because I haven't quite made it to that part of my parenthood just yet. But I can only speculate that. You know, you. I think as as a as a human, you want for you know maybe someone that you're responsible for to not make the same mistakes as you, or to be better than you are and be greater than you are as a as a person because you feel like that you've experienced something in life that you can maybe protect them from or or whatnot, or or want them to be able to supersede you and and. Uh, you know, I think I think it's a it's going to be a it's going to be a, a really interesting walk for me to have to take myself. Cause I'm a very competitive person, and I got to take myself out of her life in that in that manner, and and try to just let her find her own way. You know, and, and I know it's really easy to say, <laughs> it's super easy to say that. So I, you know, I don't know. I, I really wish I had a better answer, but I'm going to sort of just feel it out as I go. And I guess that's all you really can do as, as a kid. I mean. I remember, I remember, like, because I played football and my dad played football, and, and I was, I wanted to be good because he was good and, and so on. I think those are lessons that you have to learn too. Uh, you know, kids have to sort of learn that if they, they can't just hear that. Um, how do you say, uh, like, they can't just hear that. You know, you got to do what you want to do, not what they want you to do. They, they have to like really. Go and see if that's what's something that they want to do. You know, they shouldn't just want to do it because their parents did it, or they should not want to do it because their parents want to do it. You know, they should really go and maybe try to just explore it, and, and it should be okay if they don't want to, you know, do something. I remember I was doing, I was in martial arts, and and uh, you know, I, I, there was a part where there's a time where I wanted to quit, and I, and I, I didn't want to go to like to to my um, to my class that night, and and she was like, well. My mom was like, um, "Look, you you can quit. You can quit if you want, but you've said that you were going to go to this class, so you you should, you have to go to the class. And then after afterwards, you can you can withdraw if you'd like, but you have to say and honor what you said that you were going to do. And if that's your choice later, then you can do that as well. So I think it's really just making just because someone doesn't want to do something, they you can't just let them out of of a commitment if they've." Sort of done, and it was. I ended up staying in it. It was just that I didn't, I didn't really want to come in from playing <laughs> and, go to, and go to a class. <laughs> and, and it was, uh, it was really smart of my mom, you know, to give me the choice that if I really didn't want to quit, but I had to honor what I was going to do or what I said I was going to do. Next question over here. Hey, Jenny. Uh, coming back to that, how much are you thinking about in between the adult movies you're making, making films like this one that your little girl will be able to watch before she's eighteen? <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing almost at my <laughs> mm. step up. She's going to end up watching a lot. <laughs> it's going to be her punishment. Uh, but, um, I, you know, I don't know. It's not a conscious decision. Um, if, if some great stories come along that, that are appropriate for her, I mean, I'm not going and looking for that type of thing. Um, it's really whatever comes across that is that is really just a great story. I just love stories and characters and things that I think that I can service, uh, you know, maybe better than you know than than anything else that's going on. And, and uh, uh, you know, but I think things in life definitely persuade you. You know, things that you're doing inspire you and, and creatively turn you on. And uh, you can I can feel the the sway that it's had on the other creative sort of things that I've uh, sort of got in the pipeline. You know? So it definitely changes you, you know, having a child. And it's right back in the center. Hey, how are you? Hi. Um, I was just kind of curious what, would it, what it was like for you to play a Latino character and what did you learn from it? 
like what's different than I know it's animated, but what's different than the other characters? Like? Yeah, uh, you know that was a it was a conversation that I had with Jorge probably too late. Uh, you know, cause I, I love the care, I love the story, and, I, and then it d dawned on me. I was like, I don't think he's a warming down like a Spanish accent, does he? You know. But, you know, and, and I asked him that, and he was like, no, <laughs> thank God. And uh, so I think, it, I think it really was for me living in the world of, of, this, of this world, and, and it's obviously a very magical land. It's not exactly, you know, it's not Mexico. It's like San Anel, which is a, you know, a, a sort of fantasy town. Um, you know, and we're like we're a little marionette looking type like wooden people and, and uh you know, so I don't really know if I can speak to what it what it was like to play a Latin character. Uh and I didn't really try to portray that because we really did want it to feel like there was that not everyone had, you know, a Spanish sort of feeling uh, persona or, or or voice or anything. And, so, you know, to give it a little bit more accessibility, I think that was smart. That so it, you didn't feel like only I could only connect to this if I, you know, was Latin. And um, so I, but it was, it's cool. I mean, I, I've learned a lot about about that tradition specifically. I mean, I still don't know Spanish, um, <laughs> but but it's it's cool. I, I mean, you get to really learn a lot about a different uh, doing what I get to do. You get to drop into all these really interesting little worlds. So it was, it was it was fun. Hopefully, if you get to make another one, maybe I'll speak more Spanish and, and <laughs> get to sing. Hi, Hi. So, being your first animated film, would you say, looking back on your whole career, that this has been your biggest challenge? And if not, which role has been? Um, I wish I could say this. Look, animated movies are, are like vacations for actors, because <laughs> like, <laughs> you, know, like you. Um, Look, you don't you don't have to work twelve hours a day like you you know on a, on a live action movie set you show up and you're generally there for about 15, 12 to fifteen hours. I get to show up with my sweats and like uh, you know Zoe jokes around like she's like I don't even brush my teeth when I go in I just like go right in and and you know you sit in the in like a sound stage and there really aren't any wrong answers when I say that like I could have done I could have spoken French and he'd been like. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. Like uh, you know, we're not wasting time here. You know, because we have enough. And uh, you know, it was play. It was a really playful thing. You know, it it was it was nice to like kind of give the reins to somebody else. You know, and, and and really let them run and then come back and be like, all right, this is what we've got so far. Uh, let's keep building. And then so you so build some more, and then they go away and they they work on it and massage it and build it more, and then they come back. And it's sort of this really departmentalized, piecemealed sort of experience with a bunch of different people all sort of working at the same thing. And um, I would love to do it again. I'd love to, I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I would really do the wish I had, could have been in the same room uh, with, with like Diego and, and Zoe. That would have been a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, next time. I would say one last question over here. Hi. So um, at the same time that these movies coming out, you know, you told me Magic Mike, Double S L, and women, Savannah are going crazy. Did you and your wife? Does she like have? Does she prefer to have you doing things like this, or do you guys ever talk about that? Uh, she doesn't prefer. I mean, she actually loves Magic Mike. Believe it or not, like uh, she, it, it is a uh, you know, it's weird because that my job in that is to do things that probably wives wouldn't want their husbands doing. Um, but she's I don't know. She's just cool like that like she I the my, our two choreographers on the movie um, they're old Janet dancers so they all know each other they're like really really good friends so I, I work it out with them and then I go and show Jenna for the approval uh, but I, she just really she loves stories and movies too I mean she's a she's an actress she goes and does you know uh, things that probably other husbands wouldn't want their wives going to do so it's it's a nice trade-off you know it's a it's a it's an interesting thing that actors have to deal with but you know, I don't know. We're kind of it's it's like we're ten years into it now, so it's uh it's kind of an old hat now. We have moved past it. I still don't like seeing her kiss other people. It's just the way it goes. Um, but I don't know. You know, she she just really wants me to be happy. And same same with her. You know, if if she if she had to do some part or gets offered a, a movie that is going to be hard for me to watch. You know, I don't want to tell her that she can't do it. You know, it just really has to line up with something 
creatively and emotionally that she would want to do and why she would want to do it. You know, and I think uh, I think for us both, we really just if if I wasn't doing magic, if I was just doing like some movie about strippers, like then like I don't know, she'd probably be like, why do you want to do that? But it started off as a story that I really loved, like, and and it's grown into something that I even love more, you know, because it's a weird world that I experienced in my real life, and I found it wild, wildly interesting. And even though it was a dangerous kind of uh, dark world, it was an experience that you know I, I wouldn't trade, you know, because I I luckily got out of it <laughs> unscathed, and. Uh, you know, and I think it, it's just a part of me telling some part of my life, and you know, and she understands that, so it's 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 fun. Great, thank yeah. you, everyone.